Let's go to Pretoria now, where we're joined by Bantu Holomisa. He's a member of South Africa's parliament and the president of the United Democratic Movement. So thank you so much for coming on to this news hour and joining us on TRT World. You know, Archbishop Tutu wasn't just an inspiration to South Africans, but he really was a global icon. When you look at the crises that leaders are dealing with around the world, what are the lessons that we can learn from the Archer's life, from his morals and from his teachings? Well, first and foremost, uh, Bishop Tutu didn't only campaign for our freedom in South Africa, but he also moved around the world to garner support and uh, to pressurize the Pretoria government then to free South Africa. Uh, what we can learn from him, if he was still in his energy, uh, in this pandemic, I'm sure you would have stood up and uh, had called for the leaders to make sure that whatever little vaccinations are there, they must spread equally to the rest of the world. Not what we see today, where you will find that the capitals, the major capitals of the world, uh, sort of uh, discriminating against the continent of Africa. And Mr. Holomisa, you knew the Arch very well on, on a personal level. I understand that you were part of the preparations committee for his funeral taking place on, on Saturday. Can you just share with our international viewers uh, some of the memories that you have with him and, and what you've learned from him? Well, at one stage, I was the head of uh, the then Transkei government, uh, one of the nominal homelands. I remember vividly that uh, a bishop of the, uh, an Anglican bishop in Umtata uh, used to come to my office, and uh, they were asking me to undo what the Matanzima government did by making sure that uh, we put a moratorium on death penalties, which were affected by the old discredited regime of the Matanzima. And indeed, we communicated with the clergy and led by him, because I'm also an Anglican. So the bishop has got a good head, a good sense of humor, of course. And uh, around one time, we were flying together from Cape Town where I was seated next to him, he said, General, I need to sleep now and communicate with God. So you will wake me up when we are descending, when we are descending in to land in Johannesburg. But he was that kind of a person, a father, a comedian, if you want, and uh, but above all, a servant of God, who have not served God only, but also served the people of God. Mm -hmm. uh, he was a, a torchbearer of the moral compass, not only for South Africa, but the whole world. How well we have learned from him uh, or not, signs here at home are that we didn't listen to him. But uh, it was a pleasure, anyway, to have worked with him and also Madiba. Mm -hmm. uh, those, it was a privilege for me to have served those yeah. two most important people in the world. And speaking of those two very important people for all South Africans, we've lost them now. And over the last few years, it's not just Madiba, now Desmond Tutu. I can think of Ahmed Katrada, George Bezos, those real stalwarts of the anti-apartheid movie, a, a real guiding light for South Africans. And the issues and the trouble South Africa is going through right now, still very much divided among racial lines, endemic uh, a, a corruption, uh, disenfranchised uh, a youth. Who leads the country now? Who do we look to? Well, unfortunately, the tripartite alliance, which was led by the ANC, seemed to be in total. And uh, the South African must seriously consider talking or uh, talking about the need to establish 
a, a new alliance which would uh, resuscitate the original agenda of this country, which the comrades uh, led by the ANC have unfortunately decided to abandon it. So God will guide us to who will take us out of this quagmire. We can't just fold our arms, but we have to work hard to promote the dream of Madiba, the dream of Bishop Tutu and many others, that of reconciling South Africa. In doing so, reconciliation will only be effective once we have adequately addressed the imbalances and, uh, and uh, the challenges of the past, the backlogs of imbalances and backlogs of the past. So otherwise, if we just theorize about it, people, we must talk about how do we make sure that the 57 million black population is an active participant in the economy of this country. Mm. Pantalo Misa, thank you so much for your time and sharing your memories and thoughts of the late Archbishop Desmond Tutu.